17-year-old Alexis Murphy, and she is headed out to get her hair done. Hi. About to make this long ass drive. I don't want to do it. I'm going to turn up. It's nothing new. I'll let your girl. Oh, she can make you smile. Yeah. I miss her so much. Alexis's mom, Laura, recalls that Saturday in early August, now every detail of the day engraved in her memory. I was getting up to go to work. I know she coming in because I knew I was supposed to give her some money for her hair. She was laughing. She was happy. And she walked at the house, and that was the last time I've seen her. Just after 3 p.m., Alexis posts on her Twitter account, Bergbound. She's on her way to Lynchburg, about a 20-minute drive from her home in Shipman, Virginia. Alexis's mother is on her way out, too, to work the overnight shift at the post office. But in the wee hours of Sunday morning, Alexis's grandmother, who lives with them, awakes to a terrifying discovery. Alexis didn't make her midnight curfew. She had never done that before. That's something that's not right. That's not Alexis. Um, Laura called me, and um, she said Alexis didn't come home. And I told her right then and there, she need to call the cops. I was trying to keep calm and not panic because, you know, as a father, you know, in this situation by not coming home at a curfew and not bringing my car home, you know, you, you think about just about anything runs the plot. Alexis's social media footprint is large with thousands of followers turned searchers. Social media was a big help because they put it out there so people just start coming and searching with them. But they called the state police in and they had the helicopter in the air that night. The FBI was on ground, too. Then just three days after Alexis goes missing, police make a disturbing discovery. Her father's car that she was driving was found in a movie theater parking lot. It has been more than a week since loved ones heard from 17-year-old Alexis Murphy. The Nelson County, Virginia resident vanished while reportedly driving south to Lynchburg last weekend. Surveillance pictures showed her at a gas station not far from her home. Investigators say they picked up her cell signal a few miles away and searched for days in wooded areas and homes, but to no avail. Tuesday, her car was found in Charlottesville to the north. Friday, we spoke with Murphy's aunt. Even if she would knew that she was going to be running late from her curfew, she would call and say, "I'm running 10 minutes behind. I'll get, the, you know, I'll I'll be home soon." And for her just to go and not call, it, it's completely out of character. The family remains hopeful that Murphy will be found alive. Authorities are also stressing that they are still actively searching for Murphy and still need the public's help if they hope to find her. But the search continues for the missing teen. If anybody know anything, please, please, let us know, please. Tonight, a mother pleads for help as police and the community look for answers. Alexis Murphy should have been starting her senior year of high school today. Instead, the Nelson County teenager is missing. Police arrested Randy Taylor in the girl's disappearance, a man with a lengthy criminal history. Suzanne Kennedy is live in Lovingston, Virginia with the latest now. Suzanne. Well, this is where Randy Allen Taylor lived. Authorities have been here all day long searching the property. They hauled away his camper and his personal vehicle. All of this as they search for clues into the disappearance of 17 year old Alexis Murphy. It's like my heart just been ripped out. My heart been ripped out. Laura Ann Murphy is trying to keep it together as she waits for word about her daughter's disappearance and likely abduction. Someone called me, I'm like, I hope that's her. I mean, I look at my phone, hoping it's her. Even the days when she gone missing, I just kept calling her cell phone. Alexis Murphy was last seen August 3rd on her way to Lynchburg from her Nelson County home. Her car was found three days later in Charlottesville. Today, authorities announced the arrest of this man, 48-year-old Randy Allen Taylor, and charged him in connection to the team. I want to assure her family and the Nelson County community that we will keep looking as long as it takes to find her. Today, the FBI and local authorities search the home where Taylor lives. Around the small town of Lovingston, there are pink ribbons to remember Alexis and posters with details of her disappearance. Suspect Taylor frequented this mini mart. As soon as I saw his picture, I, I knew I knew I'd seen him in here before. And um, it was just, I don't know, it just struck me in a really kind of strange way. And um, 
just that I interacted with him and everything. Alexis's aunt drives around town with her missing poster in her window, hoping this arrest will lead to her niece. I just want her home. I just want everybody to be together. They just found perhaps the most important piece of evidence, her cell phone. So crucial, so filled with information. Now, this is her alleged abductor. Car dealership employee and ex-con Randy Taylor sits behind bars tonight as Alexis is still missing and her family grows more frantic by the hour. A gas station surveillance camera captured Alexis right before she disappeared August 3rd near Charlottesville, Virginia. The video shows Alexis and this creep Taylor at the same place at the very same time. The suspect doesn't deny he and Alexis interacted, but he offered a bizarre explanation for why cops found one of the 17-year-olds hairs in his camper. Here's his lawyer with that. She made a comment to him about um, smoking marijuana based upon her seeing him at another car wash in Levingston weeks, a month before that. He had indicated to her that he uh, would like to get some more. She said, I know a guy. She told him to meet at another location in Levingston. And uh, they rode up there in both cars. Of course, that could be all made up by this ex-con, who's probably a pathological liar to boot. After that, Taylor claims he and Alexis and this mystery drug dealer went to his camper where he and the man smoked pot, and then Alexis drove off with the drug dealer never to be seen again. The story, of course, has her family outraged. I'm gonna talk to them in a second. Could Alexis Murphy's cell phone hold a clue to blow this case wide open straight out to Nadine Maser, WDBJ reporter on the ground in Virginia? What is the very latest tonight? Well, yes, Jane, as you mentioned, that phone, that cell phone is such a pe crucial piece of evidence. And I spoke to the lead investigator just a few hours ago. It's the first time he's spoken to any of the media since they've held any press conferences. He tells me that they actually found uh, several cell phones during their search throughout Nelson County. One did make a match for Alexis's, and he clearly couldn't comment anymore on what they found with that cell phone because, you know, it is an ongoing investigation. They also upped the ante on their search efforts this weekend. They uh, uh, crews were on the ground on by foot with canines uh, for the first time that we had seen in a few days. Several people out there. They did recover a red piece of clothing from the Rockfish River, but I'm told just a few hours ago that that does not belong to Alexis Murphy. So they've hit a dead end with that. But again, this cell phone is a very crucial piece of evidence, like you said. And there is video of Alexis the last time she was seen at this location where there's a gas station as well as uh, a restaurant where she would grab a uh, frozen drink, a dessert drink, and uh, there is the creepy guy that claims that she approached him and they started talking about pot. You know what? As her relative said, the idea that she would go out of her way to interact with this guy really doesn't pass the from Nelson County in August of 2013. Randy Taylor is now behind bars for her murder. Friday, her family held a pink out event to celebrate her birthday and her favorite color. The family also decorated a tree with pictures and lights at the gas station where Murphy was last seen alive. Look, Nancy, right now they don't have enough. They have a very, very little. They have this image of him. They know that he's a bad guy, that he has a record. They know that they suspected him about that other girl, Samantha, but they don't have much more. And unless they're very careful, they're going to end up with a Zimmerman, end up with a Joshua Young and an acquittal. So they have to be very, very careful here that they have enough evidence before they move. Okay, uh, does, does this back it up? Before you move me, Gold, all the way to the not guilty, out to you, Jeff Gold. Why isn't he talking? If he's innocent, why isn't he telling police why he was having a conversation with this girl at the gas station? Well, he has a right not to talk. And look at the kind I didn't of facts. Ask you that. Look, look at the I kind of the facts you're marshaling, Nancy. I know the Constitution. You're talking about going to a sex shop. A sex shop that he had, he, he had a burglary conviction. I mean, come on. These, there's nothing a here. Why should he A burglary conviction? Uh, Tom and Why I guess, that's the tip of the iceberg. He's got a rap sheet as long as I-75. So what? A burglar. So what?
Lawyer wants new DNA tests and another review of social media. We're talking about the Alexis Murphy case out of Nelson, Virginia. Our sister station in Charlottesville reports Randy Taylor's attorney wants the reviews because police are investigating another man's connection to several missing persons cases and a murder in the Commonwealth. That other man, of course, is Jesse Matthew Jr., who's locked up for the disappearance of Hannah Graham. The defense wants to make sure all of the facts jurors use to convict Taylor are 100% accurate. Taylor's attorney said in a two-page letter today, this is not a fishing expedition, but rather this request is based upon the evidence present at Randy Taylor's trial and based upon... The girl did not smoke or drink anything. His DNA should be in that bottle in that trailer. All right, now, Randy worked at a car shop, and he claims that he spoke with Alexis about pot there oh, last month, and then he claims he asked Alexis to help him find, as you just heard, a drug dealer when he runs into her at the gas station hours before she vanishes. He claims Alexis said, I know a guy, and the three of them end up uh, back at Randy's uh, camper, and Alexis stood around while he and the mystery man drank and smoked, and then he claims Alexis and the drug dealer took off in separate cars straight out to the lion's den. What do you think, panel? Is this a complete and utter fabrication to explain away the fact that cops found a hair, a hair of Alexis in his camper? And, and I'll start with Jay Wendell Gordon. Yeah, it is absolutely a fabrication. In fact, it's totally absurd. I mean, they found a hair in his camper. I mean, what is he doing in a camper with a 17-year-old girl? save a drug dealer why are you in the camper with a 17 year old girl even if you are with a drug dealer this man looks like he's about 100 years old somewhere near or, or perhaps even 50 and that's what i was going to say 50. It, it makes absolutely no sense you, you meet by happenstance at a at a filling station and all of a sudden you take her down to a camper and she comes up missing and this is not the first woman or young girl a teenage girl has who has come up missing uh in relation to this man but this is the second so you know they have their work just sentenced to two life sentences for the murder and abduction of the Virginia teenager. Murphy was last seen in August of 2013 in Lovingston, Virginia. Her car was found, her body never recovered. Investigators found one of her hairs at Taylor's home. believed to have been with Graham in a bar the night she went missing, but said they did not have enough information to arrest or detain him after searching his apartment and then seizing his car. There is currently a $50,000 reward out for information about Graham's disappearance, and anyone with information is being urged to call police. Now, our Kevin Lewis has been following this investigation, and he has the latest on the case. If that young lady's touched your life in any way, you have the responsibility to help us find her. He spoke with command and conviction, Charlottesville's top cop saying, bring Hannah home. Um. Detectives searched this off-campus apartment where a man who police say was the last to see Hannah alive lives. They seized his cell phone and car, but so far don't have enough evidence to arrest him. Think about that section of the mall and replay in their mind, did I see someone is a black male, 32 years of age, six foot two, 270 pounds with dreadlocks with Hannah Graham. Across town, thousands lined up to sign up for a massive search. It could have been anyone. These UVA roommates say volunteering was the obvious choice. Last night we went to the vigil and singing the good old song, knowing that one of our who's wasn't out there singing with us, it tore us apart. It's horrible. Prosecution documents, the witness says she was walking in Charlottesville's downtown mall with a friend when a man tried to high five her. She didn't respond, so the man reportedly went up to a female walking alone and put his arm around her. That same witness said she and her friend then followed the pair to a nearby bar where the witness told her friend that she 
saw Matthew catch up to her, put his arm around her next to his car in a way that did not look friendly. The witness told police he heard Graham say in a frightened way to Matthew, I'm not getting in that car. Person ...to see Graham alive on the night. Literally hundreds of law enforcement and civilian volunteers in an effort to find Hannah. We think perhaps today proved their worth. Alboromel County Police Department will now take the lead on what's being called the death investigation. They're asking anyone in the area of Old Lynchburg Road or Walnut Creek Park who saw anything suspicious around the time that Hannah disappeared. That's where we join our Kristen Holmes, who is at West Potomac High School in Alexandria, with details on today's probably a very somber service. Good, good afternoon, Kristen. Good afternoon, Caroline, and it has been a very somber service, and it's continuing right now in the auditorium of West Potomac High. They have the friends, teachers, students, family, all here sharing stories and memories of Hannah Graham. Hannah Graham is, of course, the 18-year-old UVA student whose remains were found after she went missing two months ago. And the service is, be call is being called, as you said, a celebration of life. It started with Hannah's father, and he opened up with anecdotes of a young Hannah. He talked about how proud he was of her, and he even mentioned that he had spoken to her two days before her abduction, and she had just gotten to live in the ski house. She was an avid skier at UVA the following year, and so he was so proud of her and very excited. And the family played an emotional slideshow of photos, including her time here at West Potomac, where she was on the softball team and a saxophone player in the band. And following that, her band leader spoke very, very emotionally. And during the service, they are planning to have the band play several tributes to Hannah during the whole memorial. And we actually got a chance to speak to the principal of West Potomac as well as an old softball teammate of Hannah's, and they reflected on the loss for us. Hannah was certainly a, a star student at our school, heavily involved in softball and the marching band. Uh, and it's those two student groups that are um, here with us today that, that are most proud to celebrate her life. We have uh, different mementos from Hannah's life, a uh, ski chair from her, from her time, uh, different uh, memorabilia from uh, her softball years and, and her band years. Um, the family has put together a, a wonderful uh, slideshow of, of pictures of, of Hannah's life. And we have faculty and community speakers that uh, are, are helping to, to, to bring attention to to really a great a great person that we're we've all been touched to know. It's sad to see that like kind of things like this have to bring a community together, but it's glad that we can come together and like celebrate because she was a great girl. She had a great life. Party on this block around midnight on Friday, September 12th, alone and heading in this direction toward McGrady's pub. Police believe she makes another stop somewhere along the way, but she still has to walk this road about a half mile or so by herself and in the dark. 12.45 a.m., this camera captures Hannah outside this pub, also alone. She continues to the Charlottesville Pedestrian Mall, but first heads under this bridge and another surveillance camera catches her running by this gas station. Police don't believe anyone is chasing her. 13 minutes after 1.08 a.m., this jewelry store's video captures her. Jesse Matthew is first seen here following her. 12 minutes pass. She texts a friend saying she's lost in Charlottesville. Police say that's the last trace of her cell phone. But sometime after, police say one witness remembers seeing her inside this bar. Tempo's owner disputes that, but she's under 21 and can't legally be served alcohol. Witnesses say Matthew is last seen with her outside Tempo, putting his arm around her. The rest is a mystery. She already had plenty that night. We want to talk to him. We want to talk about his interaction with a sweet young girl that we can't find. In a strange turn, Matthew is now wanted for reckless driving after an incident Saturday at... Well, Kenneth, the Commonwealth's attorney in nearby Nelson County is asking the FBI to test whether or not DNA from Jesse Matthew was found inside the vehicle of Alexis Murphy, who disappeared last year. Now, so far, investigators have found no link whatsoever, and the request for the testing was done by the attorney for Randy Taylor, who was convicted this year in Murphy's killing. Meanwhile, here in Charlottesville, still no test results from Richmond. They are literally turning over a new leaf with every step. You find golf balls in the strangest places.
Search teams from the Virginia State Police continue looking for any clues along Old Lynchburg Road near the area where remains found over the weekend could be those of Hannah Graham. The not knowing kind of puts a collective pall all over the mall. We kind of wonder what's going on. Mary Luce manages Tool Jewelers on the Charlottesville downtown walking mall. The business was one of the first to turn over surveillance video to police of Hannah Grant walking on the mall on the morning she disappeared September 13th. The longer it goes on, you wonder, you know, what does this mean? Um, what does it mean to, to the investigation? What does it mean to her parents? We know we're all waiting to hear something. All along the downtown mall and throughout town, the desire to know answers from forensics testing of the remains is mixed with caution. Everyone's really anxious to get this resolved and put it behind us as a community and move on, but um, you know, it's important that it's done correctly. We need to just be patient and let the uh, experts do their work. I think at some point it's just so painful you just you just can't think about it. Beginning a request from Randy Taylor's attorney. You may remember Randy Taylor is convicted in the killing of Alexis Murphy. His attorney wants prosecutors to review evidence found in Alexis Murphy's car and compare that to Jesse Matthews' DNA. The prosecutor says he doesn't have any evidence that there is a link between the cases, but he says he will order a test. We obtained this letter, attorney Michael Hanahan addressed to Nelson County's prosecutor asking investigators to compare Alexis Murphy's social media accounts with Jesse Matthews to determine if they've ever made contact. Nelson County's prosecutor responded saying in order to dispel speculation, he will meet in the coming days with investigators in the Murphy case. It all comes as the 40 searchers on the ground today looking for Hannah Graham travel to Nelson County. Will you search Randy Taylor's property? That has nothing to do with this case with Hannah. Mm. We're focused on Hannah. In addition to the drone that's searching by air now, this weekend crews will unveil a special airplane that takes high definition images. But this massive effort doesn't stop with technology. With the start of deer hunting season this weekend, investigators want hunters to be on the lookout for Hannah. They'll be around everywhere, you know, in different parts of the woods. It probably has never been checked yet, you know. And that really will help out too. Meantime, search crews will now sport these new wristbands with Hannah's initials. It's a reminder of how serious their role really is. One, the city police chief believes is best supported when the public steps up. Later, authorities found her remains on an abandoned property in a local park outside of Charlottesville. During a pretrial hearing Monday, a detective testified that a bloodhound detected Graham's scent inside Matthew's apartment on the passenger door of his car and at a nearby dumpster. Matthew's defense team argued Graham never went inside the apartment and that there wasn't enough probable cause to justify a search of his home. Matthew is no stranger to the courtroom. He's been given three life sentences for attempted capital murder and sexual assault on a woman in 2005. He also faces charges in the 2009 death of Virginia. Did you see Hannah? Did anybody see Hannah? Did you see Hannah? Did you see Hannah? Who saw Hannah? Hannah Graham and Morgan Harrington. Up until now, their only connection was that they're both college students from the state of Virginia and both disappeared after they were walking alone at night. Call the police tip line with anything that just might help us to bring Hannah home. But now the two young women and their families may be connected through tragedy. Police are saying they have new forensic evidence that may link the recent disappearance of Graham to the unsolved death of Harrington from 2009. Police searching for Graham call it a significant break, but wouldn't elaborate. And it came after investigators searched the car and apartment of 32-year-old Jesse Matthew, accused of kidnapping Graham after being seen with her in these surveillance videos on a Friday night into a Saturday morning. The parents of 20-year-old Harrington believe it supports what they've been arguing for weeks, that the suspect in Graham's disappearance may be the same person who killed their daughter five years ago. That's what it's always been about, help save the next girl. I can accept it because I fought vigorously, just like Morgan did that night. I fought vigorously for five years to prevent him from killing another um, person or taking another person. Maybe we've, we've kept him um, from offending some other time, I don't know. But police aren't going that far, not at all confirming a DNA connection 
only saying that it's a new forensic link for investigators to pursue. There is still a great deal of work to be done in regards to this investigation, and we appreciate the public's patience as we move forward. Do they have fingerprints of, of Jesse uh, that were found on items when the 2009 victim was recovered? Do they have hairs and fibers, in other words, unique material off a jacket? But police did find a DNA match between the Harrington murder and a third case, a sexual assault in 2005 in a D.C. suburb. The unidentified 26-year-old victim was walking home from a grocery store when she was grabbed from behind. Police are now looking at this rough sketch of the suspect witnesses saw running away, trying to determine if this is Matthew. At the same time, they're still searching for Hannah Graham, a second year student at the University of Virginia. Her parents had just sent her off to school, now missing for over two weeks. She was last seen early Saturday morning after 1 a.m. near the Tempo restaurant and bar in downtown Charlottesville. In the minutes before, she was seen on surveillance video outside of this Irish pub and then walking under a small overpass alone. She starts running, but it doesn't appear she's being followed. And when she gets to the downtown mall, you can see in surveillance video someone is following her. Police now think the man was a good Samaritan who they don't believe was a suspect, was concerned she was intoxicated, and says he backed away once he saw her looking very comfortable with a man who looked like a friend. That friend, police say, was Matthew. A week after Graham disappeared, Matthew walked into the Charlottesville Police Department on his own and spoke with a lawyer, but sped off before answering any questions from investigators. The police chased him and lost him. Four days later, a sheriff's deputy in Texas took Matthew into custody after getting a tip from a woman who spotted him on the beach. Jesse's been described as sort of a smooth-talking, kind kind of person on the outside, and so they might be attracted to him for help. I'll give you a ride, I'll take you someplace, whatever it might be. So from that standpoint, there is, there appears to be some similarity between 2009 and... So many cases like Graham and Harrington, this year alone, 116 missing in Virginia, all under 20 years old. Matthew is charged with abduction in the Graham case and has not yet entered a plea. Police say he is not cooperating. There's no way of knowing if he's responsible for Graham, Harrington, or any more victims, but police are chasing all leads as they continue to... ...tech student Morgan Harrington went missing from Charlottesville, the same town where Alexis's car was discovered. Morgan's body was found three months later in a field south of town. September 13th, 2010, 19-year-old Samantha Clark went missing in the town of Orange, Virginia just minutes from Charlottesville. Her body was never discovered. And again, on the same date of September 13th, but in 2014, 18-year-old Hannah Graham disappeared after a night out with college friends in Charlottesville. Five weeks later, her remains were discovered in a nearby abandoned property. Morgan's father calling her killer violent, sadistic, and dangerous. Morgan, a Virginia Tech co-ed, had been missing since October 17th when she vanished after leaving a Metallica concert at an arena in Charlottesville. Cops say Morgan had left the arena, but she was not allowed to come back in because she didn't have her ticket. The months-long search for Morgan ended tragically when her body was discovered on a remote farm. Morgan's dad believes the killer is an experienced criminal, maybe even a sexual predator. Morgan's mom spoke out yesterday on the five-month anniversary of her precious daughter's disappearance. We do have her body, which is a comfort, but we don't have answers, and we need answers, and we need justice. Morgan's mom, Jill Harrington, joins me by phone. Jill, thank you so much for being here on this solemn anniversary. I can't imagine what you are going through. First of all, our condolences. Thank you so much, Jane. And we so much appreciate what you do for all the missing and abused um, women and children in this country. 
Well, we don't want your daughter ever to be forgotten, and we want to make this tragedy a force for positive change. Yes. Let me start with some of the more disturbing aspects of this case, and I understand that there's something that you know about the condition of her body that is quite disturbing, but may be a very significant clue. Can you tell us about that? Yes, and, and I can't go into too much detail, but it is very apparent from um, seeing Morgan's remains that, uh, you know, people think, oh, well, she was killed. Well, they think, it, you know, she went to sleep. You know, she was killed in a fashion that was brutal enough to break, fracture her bones. I mean, that is a lot of force. I was not able to see the soft tissue injuries because he threw her in a field to rot. And what was left for me was a skeleton. But I saw the damage that he ravaged on her skeleton. Yes, ma'am. I can't even imagine what that would be like to see your own daughter's body in that condition. Can you give us a hint of what you are going through as a family right now? You know, I, I th we're medical people, and so we are used to focusing and being disciplined. And I think um, uh, rather than uh, giving in to our outrage and, and our sorrow, we are trying to find justice. And what, what's happening on that front? Uh, you feel that there is a sadistic monster walking free. Have cops told you anything? I know they are working hard um, on the case that they have. I think we have a good chance of finding the person who did this. Uh, my efforts are to raise awareness in the community um, because we see, you know, spring is coming and co-eds are out running on the bridge where Morgan was abducted every day. I hear authorities say, well, Morgan was provocatively dressed. Oh, please. You know? That I, is, you know what, those people I don't even dignify with a response. But Jane, uh, Jill, I, I want to thank you. Night. CBS 6 has also exclusively learned that investigators have interviewed at least 20 other cab employees from around Charlottesville. To learn more about that October night as they did after Harrington went missing. Sources say Jesse Matthew was one of them five years ago. Everything's starting to add up. Career cab driver Melvin Carter, who knew Matthew, said he reached out to investigator five years ago after being questioned about local cab companies. And I asked which taxi cab? She said, yeah, she did jump into a taxi cab that night before the, her last uh, being seen alive. Sources also confirmed to CBS 6 that as part of this active investigation, the cab Matthew drove in 2009 was seized by authorities from a farm just two weeks ago. He could have been, he made an impression on her because from what I heard about her mental state, she was upset and everything else. So she might have found someone who was loving and trusting and comfort her. Those close to Matthew in 2009 tell CBS 6 that they informed investigators that they would joke with their former co-worker that he resembled this sketch of the man linked to a 2005 rape in Fairfax and the man linked to Harrington. They say Matthew would at times brush it off and other times get visibly upset and disappear. The murderer Jesse Matthew came within a few feet of Morgan Harrington's parents. The Harrington said Jesse Matthew gave them a brazen stare as he walked by. It was a day of contrast as Morgan Harrington's parents put up ribbons, refreshing the memorial on the bridge where their daughter was last seen alive. We still want people to notice and, and remember something big happened here. Morgan had stepped out of an arena and was trying to find a ride when she disappeared on October 17, 2009. Her remains were found on a rural farm nine miles south of Charlottesville. It has been such a long journey. It's been six years that we have been working diligently um, to try and find answers and um, find the person who we believe killed our beloved daughter, Morgan Dana Harrington. Jesse Matthew became a suspect in Harrington's murder after he was implicated in last year's abduction and murder of UVA student Hannah Graham. Earlier this year, he was convicted in a 2005 Fairfax rape case. Now the Harringtons say it's their turn for justice. I wanted him to see, for all intents and purposes, this is the face of justice for Jesse Matthews because 
I've known and believed for some time that he killed our Morgan. Matthew was assigned attorneys, and then as he walked next to the Harringtons, he stared at both of them. I want him to know that we are present, and we've been present for six years, and we're going to be present for the months to come. And uh, uh, he needs to know that uh, justice is coming. So why did it take six years for charges to come in the Morgan Harrington case? Some legal observers say it's to put more pressure on Matthew to plead guilty. The Harringtons say they would be okay with the plea deal, but only if Matthew tells the Harringtons what happened. The she says not only sexually assaulted her with his hand, but also tried to have intercourse with her. That part is new. The woman said she was walking home on the evening of September 24, 2005 from a giant grocery store on Germantown Road. She was almost to her row house when she said she came across an African-American man asking her questions. She walked faster, then heard footsteps running behind her. Suddenly, she said he lifted her up and started carrying her. He dropped her, picked her up again, and then dragged her by her feet. She said he took her to a grassy area near some woods and threw her to the ground, sat on top of her legs and began choking her and slamming her head against the ground. She remembers him taking her pants off and assaulting her. She became emotional as she described the attack and she said she used her hands to try to push him away. She said she fought back, screaming and scratching him. Suddenly, he was gone. A man who happened to be driving into the parking lot startled the attacker with the headlights of his car. He said he heard someone faintly calling for help, then saw the victim naked and covered in blood. She told him there was a guy, an African-American man who fled into the woods. He could not find the attacker, but got the woman help from neighbors who called 911. Prosecutors say the DNA collected under the, fingers, under the victim's fingernail matches Jesse Matthew. Commonwealth's attorney Ray Murrow said to the jury today, in the whole world's population, there is only one person who has that DNA profile, and it's Jesse Leroy. mother about how things have changed since. Morgan's not around anymore. She was abducted and murdered in 2009. This is video of a new public service announcement honoring the life of Morgan Harrington. It's been eight years since her body was found three months after she was killed. Her mother Jill Harrington says she misses her every day. A lot. Yeah. You know today and I, I don't cry often. Um, but today, yeah, there's been some tears. Since Morgan's death, Jill and her husband have dedicated their lives to accomplish the goals their daughter couldn't finish. Harrington says Morgan wanted to become a teacher and travel to Africa. Well, by golly, we have built a school in Zambia, Africa, the Morgan Harrington Educational Wing, where hundreds and hundreds of children are being educated. More than Morgan probably would have been able to teach if she had grown to full maturity. Since then, the Harrington family has written books, even making documentaries about Morgan. The Help Save the Next Girl Foundation was also born out of the tragedy. We wanted to protect other young women from predatory danger, and we wanted to save other families from going through the grief and anguish that we had experienced. Jill says Morgan will be amazed at how her family was able to continue to live through the pain and carry on her legacy. We owed it to her to keep on keeping on and make something of her short life. And I believe that we've done that. Harrington also says it was the love and support from the community giving them the strength to keep walking the path of healing. vanished. The 19-year-old disappeared in 2010, slipping out after midnight from her townhouse, telling her 14-year-old brother she was going out with friends. She never returned. She was with me all the time. Everywhere I went, she was with me. Law enforcement spent hours scouring this lake. They came up empty-handed. Even though we've been at this lake numerous times, uh, our experts in this matter have determined that the lake has not yet been 100% cleared. 
Samantha's cousin believes she always planned to return home. The only thing she took was her house key. And she said that she would be back before morning. On Samantha's MySpace page five days before she went missing, a mysterious clue. She posted, I hate life. I need help. I don't know what to do. Samantha's mother believes she knows who took her daughter. This man, Randy Allen Taylor. Randy Taylor come and picked her up. I mean, he called here six times, and I mean, why would you call my daughter six times if you ain't trying to um, lead her on or trying to talk her to come out the house or trying to talk her to do something? Taylor was once looked at by police in Samantha's case. But years later, this past May, in a bizarre twist, he was actually convicted in the disappearance and murder of another girl, 17-year-old Alexis Murphy. Both girls were last seen along the same stretch of Highway 29. Samantha was last seen in Orange, Virginia. Alexis disappeared in Lovingston, Virginia, about 60 miles away. Alexis's family thought they might find her after police found her cell phone, but Alexis's body was never discovered. Alexis, if you're out there and you can hear us, just know that your family loves you. We will never stop until you are home. Our family circle is broken right now. Police have surveillance video showing Alexis at a Lovingston gas station in August last year. Randy Taylor was also seen on the video. He's always maintained his innocence, saying that he and Alexis and another man went back to his camper to smoke marijuana. Then he said Alexis and the then unidentified black man left. Taylor's attorney also argued his client wasn't the last person to see Alexis Murphy alive, that instead police should have been focused on a black male, mid to late 20s, with cornrows driving a quote, 20-year-old burgundy caprice with 22-inch wheels. Despite all the talk, officials say there is no evidence linking the disappearance of Alexis Murphy to UVA student Hannah Graham. The Nelson County attorney says the black man later identified and implicated by Randy Taylor was not Jesse Matthew, the suspect in the Graham case. He also said that man had an alibi and was late.